so dear students now we shall learn about a wrist joint so if you see hand the hand consists of wrist metacarpus and digits so these are the three parts of hand the study of joints uh, had essential especially the wrist joint and first carpo metacarpal joints so these two joints are needed to study in detail as they execute wide range of movements so beginning with the wrist it is a synovial joint because it is movable so here is the wrist joint so what type of joint it is a synovial joint of ellipsoid variety under synovial joint ellipsoid variety so there is joint is the synovial joint of ellipsoid variety which is between the lower end of the radius and carpus so what you are seeing here is the lower end of the radius which articulates with the carpal bones so the lower end of the ulna means this part of the ulna does not participate in the wrist joint i uh, here there is a disc which is the intra articular disc so there is an articular disc which participates in the formation so it is a triangular fibrocartilaginous disc uh, where it form articulates with the proximal row of carpal bones so there are three carpal bones which takes part in the articulation the first bone is the scaphoid so this is the scaphoid lunate and rarely triquetrum so part of triquetral also takes part proximal articular surface it is formed by the inferior surface lower end of the radius so what you are seeing here is the inferior surface lower end of radius and the inferior surface the triangular articular disc also takes part so this is the inferior surface of triangular articular disc also takes part in the joint to form uh, and uh, this articular disc is also associated with the inferior radio ulnar joint so the joint between the radius and ulna this joint is the inferior radio ulnar joint the distal articular surface is formed by the proximal surfaces of scaphoid lunate triquetral so scaphoid is here this is the first one lunate and part of the triquetral takes part in the joint so here one thing we have to note down that wrist joint is an articulation uh, between the forearm as well as the hand so the medial bone of the forearm that is the ulna is excluded from the articulation by this articular disc so because of this articular disc the ulna is excluded from the wrist joint so ulna bone do not participate in the wrist joint and it is excluded from the articulation by an articular disc so let's talk about the ligaments present around so as other synovial joints the wrist joint also surrounded by the capsular ligament so which has got proximal and distal attachments proximally it attaches to the radius all around the radius and distally it attaches to the proximal part of the carpal bones so apart from the capsule the capsule is further strengthened by collateral ligaments so there are two collateral ligaments one is on the radial side so this is the radial collateral ligament the other side is the ulnar side which is ulnar ulnar collateral ligament so these two collateral ligaments strengthens the capsule on medial and lateral side and apart from this we can see intercarpal ligaments which are present between the carpal bones so those ligaments also are associated with the wrist joint so if you see the movements of the wrist joint it is a biaxial joint and permits flexion extension so flexion happens at the wrist extension then abduction which is the moving away that is outside abduction adduction then all the movements together called as circumduction so these are the movements happening at the wrist joint so here we can see another picture showing the uh, radius this is the radius 
this is the lower end of ulna which does not participate in the wrist joint this is the articular disc here and scaphoid lunate triquetral and here is the pisiform which is not uh, related to the wrist joint and we can see radial collateral ligament here and this is ulnar collateral ligament so the movements happening in the, at the wrist are flexion extension abduction adduction and uh, mixture of all these movements is circumduction flexion and extension occurs in the transverse axis whereas abduction and adduction occurs in the antero posterior axis of the wrist joint the movements at the wrist are usually associated with the movements of mid carpal joints that is the joint between the proximal and the distal rows of the carpal bones so the wrist and the mid carpal joints together considered as a link joint which is called like wrist complex so the but this uh, rotation movement it is compensation supination and pronation which is happening between the two bones of forearm that is between the radius and ulna so superior and inferior radio ulnar joints are associated with the supination and pronation so this lack of rotation at the wrist it is compensated by pronation and supination of forearm mid carpal joint that is the joints between the carpal bones so these are the mid carpal uh, joints and they are present between the proximal and the distal uh, carpal bones and allowing gliding and sliding movements so together with with the wrist joint all this together with the wrist joint it is called as wrist complex the wrist complex allows the flexion extension all together at the wrist complex if we see the range of motion it is around 140 degrees of uh, flexion and extension and adduction and abduction you can say around 70 degrees so flexion and extension 140 degrees and abduction and adduction is around 70 degrees flexion is assisted by long flexors of digits like uh, flexor digitorum superficialis so the muscles producing flexion is flexor digitorum superficialis flexor digitorum profundus and uh, flexor pollicis longus these are the flexors and it acts act, uh, occurs more at the mid carpal joint than at the wrist joint flexion extension it is assisted by the extensors of the wrist that is extensor digitorum extensor digiti minimi which goes to the little finger and extensor indices which goes to the index finger so these three muscles uh, helps in the extension so they assist the extension of the wrist joint and abduction is uh, more at the mid carpal joint than at the wrist joint adduction is occurs at the wrist joint flexion and extension of the hand is actually initiated at the mid carpal joint so the range of motion if we see each movement separately so flexion it is for 0 to 60 degrees means this movement from here mid prone pose so this is the normal position from mid line down to it is around 60 degrees extension from here to up that is 50 degrees you can say it is 0 degrees to 50 degrees next abduction abduction is moving away from the midline that is abduction it is 0 to 15 degrees adduction it is 0 to 15 wonder effect so this is the range of individual movements at the wrist joint so this is the dorsal aspect of the wrist showing the articular surfaces we can see the lower end of the radius here and this is the scaphoid scaphoid and we can see the lunate and partially the triquetral 
and this is the ventral side ventral side we can see the concave vitae of the radius and ulna doesn't participate in the wrist joint because there will be a disc here articular disc and we have got this scaphoid again lunate again and this is partly triquetral so let's see the relations of the wrist joint so this is the radius articular surface lower inferior aspect of radius and this is articular disc which uh, ulna doesn't participate in the wrist joint and uh, the radius side this is the lateral side so this is lateral collateral ligament this is medial collateral ligament so otherwise radial collateral ligament medial one is the ulnar collateral ligament anteriorly it is related to flexor tendons so this is flexor digitorum superficialis deep to it flexor digitorum profundus tendons and still more anteriorly this is palmaris longus longus and uh, radial side radial artery ulnar side ulnar artery and the nerve here which is along with the flexor tendons is median nerve and this is flexor carpi radialis muscle which is in a separate section and this muscle is flexor carpi ulnaris muscle so this the muscle which is along with the flexor tendons this is flexor pollicis longus so all these are the anterior relations of wrist joint and posterior relations posteriorly we have got basilic vein and cephalic vein so this is cephalic which is on the radial side that is lateral side this is basilic vein and there are tendons of extensor so dorsal side is the extensor compartment so we can see extensor digitorum muscle four tendons and deep to which is extensor indices and we can see an artery also on the dorsal aspect so this artery is anterior interosseous artery so you may be getting confused why the anterior interosseous artery is present posterior to the wrist because initially it arises in the anterior compartment that is in the flexor compartment and later it goes to the posterior compartment so along with the anterior interosseous artery you can see a nerve here so this nerve is the so this nerve here this is posterior interosseous nerve so along with this is the anterior interosseous artery this is posterior interosseous nerve and uh, we can see other extensor tendons so this is the radial side radial side means it is towards the thumb so extensor pollicis longus so this is extensor pollicis longus muscle so the two muscles which are present on each side on the dorsal side this is extensor carpi radialis the other side extensor carpi ulnaris muscle and this is going to the little finger so this is extensor digiti minimi muscle and apart from that these muscles are abductor pollicis longus which goes to the thumb pollicis longus and the nerve along with the ulnar artery is the ulnar nerve here this is ulnar nerve ulnar artery and nerve are uh, lie superficial to the flexor retinaculum after crossing the wrist joint and this is the cutaneous branch of ulnar nerve so these are the relations of the wrist joint which are present anterior and posterior to the wrist joint okay let's talk about the clinical aspect of the wrist joint uh, the superficial position of nerves vessels and tendons at the wrist 
make them exceedingly vulnerable to injuries so because all the superficial nerves wrist tendons vessels what you saw they are all present in front of the wrist so, so many structures are there in relations which we saw just now so all these are vulnerable to injuries when a person fall on a outstretched hand and also during any cut injuries or suicidal injuries all these things so next common condition associated with the wrist joint is the ganglion a uh, ganglion is a swelling or a knot it is not a nervous ganglionic tissue it is actually a non tender cystic swelling which sometimes appears on the wrist mostly it is common on the dorsal aspect of the wrist joint and its size varies from the small grape size to plum size and you uh, it usually occurs due to the mucoid degeneration of the synovial sheath around the tendon the cyst is thin walled and contains clear mucinous fluid so the flexion of the wrist makes the cyst to enlarge and it may become painful aspiration of the wrist joint it is usually done by introducing the needle posteriorly immediately below the styloid process of the ulna so here below the styloid process to be specific it is between the tendons of extensor pollicis longus and extensor indicis so this is extensor pollicis longus tendon and this is extensor indicis so the injection is the needle is inserted at this point between these two tendons so that is about the clinical aspect of wrist joint so we completed articular surfaces ligaments relations and clinical anatomy of wrist joint thank you